Lacrosse, a Native American game. The conquest of Native Americans by European settlers that took decades has left the American culture with little Native American influence. Though some places reflect Native American architecture or fashion, our country has little that remains from their way of life. Lacrosse is a thread that weaves the Native American past to the American present. In a society that is heavily influenced by sport, it is understandable that all the great traditions and customs of the Native Americans, lacrosse, a game played by Native American tribes hundreds of years ago, is the fastest growing sport in the United States today. Traditional Native American lacrosse games were sometimes major events that could last several days. As many as 100 to 1,000 men from opposing villages or tribes would participate. The games were played in open plains located between two villages, and the goals could range from 500 yards to six miles apart. Lacrosse traditionally had many different purposes. Some games were played to settle intertribal disputes. This function was essential to keeping the six nations of the Iroquois together. Lacrosse was also played to toughen young warriors for combat, for recreation, as part of festivals, and for the bets involved. Finally, lacrosse was played for religious reasons, for the, for the pleasure of the Creator, to collectively pray for something. To trace the origins of lacrosse back to its beginning has been proven difficult as the earliest records of the game show that Native Americans had been playing lacrosse prior to our earliest accounts. French Jesuit missionaries working in the St. Lawrence Valley in the 1630s were the first Europeans to see lacrosse being played by Native American Indians. One of them, Jean de Brebeuf, wrote about the game being played by the Huron Indians in 1636, and it was he who named the game lacrosse, which means crooked stick. In 1689, a clergyman, most likely John Clayton, writes of a game he witnessed the Native Americans playing. He writes, Another game is with a crooked stick and a ball made with leather stuffed with hair. He wins who drives it from the other between two trees appointed for the goal. 1805, during an expedition up the Mississippi River, U.S. Army officer Lieutenant Zebulon Pike observed a group of young Sioux and Winnebago men playing this game, or one resembling it, near the east bank of the river in what is now west central Wisconsin. He named the region Prairie Lacrosse which in turn inspired the name of both the Wisconsin County and its principal city in that region. Today, two statues in the city of La Crosse, Wisconsin, commemorate the game observed by Pike. In 1856, William George Beers standardized the game with the adoption of set field dimensions, limits to the number of players per team, and other basic rules. Beers, known as the father of La Crosse, also replaced the deerskin ball with a hard rubber ball and designed a stick better equipped for catching and accurately passing the ball. In 1869, the Mohawk Lacrosse Club was formed in upstate New York. That club is still in existence today. The first collegiate lacrosse team was formed at New York University in 1877. That New York University team is the oldest collegiate team on record in the United States. Today, over 200 colleges field lacrosse teams at the NCAA and NAIA level. Nearly 30,000 players participate in men's and women's lacrosse at the collegiate level. College lacrosse honors its most valuable players with an MVP award every year. Their MVP award is named the Tawarton Award. The Tawarton Foundation is a nonprofit organization tasked with fulfilling the mission of the Tawarton Award, which includes recognizing excellence in the sport of lacrosse by annually honoring the most outstanding men's and women's college player and legends of the game. Also honoring Native American heritage of the sport through the awards name and by integrating Native American traditions and cultures throughout the program and by giving back to Native American community in a meaningful way through educational scholarships and youth development. The Tawarton Foundation honors the historical and contemporary contributions of the Iroquois Confederacy to the game of lacrosse. The Board of Directors of the Tawarton Foundation believes every lacrosse player should be educated about the native roots of lacrosse and understand its spiritual and cultural significance. The Tawarton Foundation, therefore, opposes the use of offensive or stereotypical American Indian names, symbols, or imagery in the sport of lacrosse. We believe that lacrosse is made stronger when all players, coaches, and fans demonstrate the kind of respect deserving of what the 
Houdini Shoney call the creator's game. In 2001, Major League Lacrosse was formed and currently has nine professional teams. Professional Lacrosse honors the heritage of the sport often and on their website site state the following. We know it is the fastest sport on two feet. From the rapid growth at the youth level to the highly competitive professional game, we thank Native Americans for what we know as lacrosse. In honor of Native American Day, the fourth Friday in September, Major League Lacrosse takes an introspective look at the history of the sport and MML athletes with roots in its origin. Thanks to the sport of lacrosse, Native Americans are being remembered for their cultural history and honored for inventing the game that is rapidly growing and emerging in new regions of the United States every year, and support for lacrosse is skyrocketing.